what we're going to be looking at in this problem is how you could figure out what equilibrium concentrations are when given the Ka value versus what we were just doing a second ago with this problem. We were finding the Ka value and they told us the equilibrium concentrations indirectly by giving us the pH. So now we're going to flip that around and if I gave you the Ka, how do you know what the equilibrium concentrations are? So we are taking this acid, benzoic acid, C6H5CO2H. I'm going to put that in water. And our benzoic acid is going to act like an acid, a proton donor. So it's going to take this H and donate it to our water. So this guy's acting like an acid, a proton donor. This one's acting like a base, a proton acceptor. After our benzoic acid donates that H, we're left with the benzoate ion. And that H2O is going to turn into H3O+. Plus. Since uh, this chemical here and this chemical here differ by only an H+, plus, this is our acid. This guy over here would be its conjugate base. And when we compare water to H3O+, plus, these guys differ by only an H+. Plus. So if this is a base, H3O+, plus is its conjugate acid. If we were to set up an ice table here for this problem, we know that the molarity of our solution, it tells us right here, it's a 0 0.02 molar solution of benzoic acid. So when I go to set up my ice table, we're starting with a 0 0.02 molar solution. Water doesn't have a molarity, and unless it tells you otherwise, you can assume no products in the beginning. And we want to know what the equilibrium concentrations are, this line, and we're trying to figure out what the pH is as well. It does give us this hint that we're going to need the chart to figure this problem out. So we need to look at, uh, we need to find benzoic acid on that chart. What that's going to do is it's going to give us our Ka value, and there's a relationship between our Ka and our concentrations of our benzoate ion, our H3O plus ion, all that kind of stuff. Well, before we get to that chart on page three, we do know that our benzoic acid is gonna come down by some amount X. And because there's a one-to-one -one relationship between benzoic acid and the benzoate ion and H3O plus, that these guys are going to come up by some amount x. Water doesn't have a molarity. So at equilibrium, this guy would be 0 0.02 minus x. This guy would be x. This guy would be x. It asks when you're allowed to ignore the change in the weak acid concentration. When are we allowed to estimate, um, because this is a weak acid, not much of it is going to dissociate into ions. X should be a pretty small number. And so if X is a pretty small number, we want to know when are we allowed to kind of approximate this X to zero, that we don't have to worry about it. That's where our chart's going to come in. So we need to find benzoic acid on that chart on that earlier in the notes. So let's go back to our chart. And we are going to find benzoic acid, which is right here. Benzoic acid has a Ka value of 6.3 times 10 to the negative fifth. I'm not using the Kb value in this reaction because the way we wrote our reaction was the benzoic acid donating the proton. So benzoic acid is acting like an acid in our reaction. So that's why I'm using the Ka, 6.3 times 10 to the negative 5. So let me jot that information down here. My Ka 
is 6.3 times 10 to the negative 5. You get to ignore this x if, if you take your ka value and multiply it by 100, is it still smaller than your original uh, weak acid concentration? So is it still smaller than this guy originally? If that's true, then you can ignore x. So let's check this. If we do 6.3 times 10 to the negative fifth, multiply that by 100, that's 6.3 times 10 to the negative third. That number is indeed smaller than 0 0.020, our initial concentration of our benzoic acid. So what that means is we get to ignore x. In other words, we get to approximate this to just say it's about 0 0.020. X is going to be so small that it's not sig fig y is going to impact this number that much. We can't ignore it on this side because it's going to come up by that amount x, and we're starting from 0 and going to x. So that number is a significant change compared to 0. Um, it's not a significant change on this side because, relatively speaking, this x value is going to be so much smaller than the 0 0.020. 0. So let's write our equilibrium expression for this reaction. We're going to do products over reactants, so our benzoate ion uh, oop, times our hydronium ion over our benzoic acid concentration. This guy was x, this guy was x, and we said that this one was ballpark 0 0.020. And we know that the value of Ka is 6.3 times 10 to the negative fifth. We looked that up on our chart. With a little bit of algebra, we can find that x is 0 0.0011 molar. So what does that mean? That means that our equilibrium concentration of both the benzoate ion and the H3O+, plus, since they are both x, they're both 0 0.0011 molar. Our um, pH, it also asks about the pH. To get pH, you do the negative log of the H3O plus concentration. So negative log of 0 0.0011 will tell us what our pH is. We would get a value of 2.96. So we were able to determine our equilibrium concentrations, our values of x, um, the pH, and we figured out how you can, when you're allowed to ignore that x in an equilibrium ice table.